Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. Uh, this week I got my hands on the new uh, UltraCat uh, 76 and for the first light I decided to image the Comet uh, C2025A6 Lemon. This Comet is quite bright but so far I did not get a chance to image it yet uh, due to bad weather. Tonight it might be clear so I'll give it a shot. As you can see I'm not in my observatory, that's because the comet altitude is quite low and the walls of the observatory would be in the way. Now let's uh, take a closer look at the telescope. The telescope has uh, 365 mm focal length with uh, 76 mm of clear aperture at f4.8. Uh, it has five elements uh, Petzval design, which means the back focus is not an issue. Um, and it also includes the standard uh, WIFD integrated focusing system, which is superior to the rack and pinion system because it prevents any kind of tilt and sagging. Uh, this telescope also has new innovative feature that is patented and first on the market. It's called um, our tilt exterminator and basically it enables you to adjust the tilt of the system by uh, turning this little wheel with Allen key from the side so you don't have to remove the camera. I think this is uh, quite crucial and useful to uh, effectively adjust the tilt of your system. The new UltraCat also solves the issue of dew shield locking. Um, in previous red cats, the dew shield could rotate freely, especially if you had something attached at the end of the tube, for example, a flat panel. But now you can simply position the dew shield in the orientation you want and lock it down with Allen key. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of the setup. We'll be using a Player One Poseidon C color camera, a Deep Sky Dead field rotator for uh, framing, Deep Sky Dead Autofocuser 3 uh, kit for UltraCat 76 so we can achieve sharp stars, Deep Sky Dead uh, DC hub for the power distribution, and also Deep Sky Dead Observatory flat panel for uh, making flat frames. We'll also be using all sky camera enclosure light for peer monitoring and the time lapse of the session. Um, I'll be getting into the details of the uh, light lineup of our all sky camera enclosures in one of the future videos, so stay tuned. Okay, so everything is set up. Uh, now it's time to wait for the evening and hopefully uh, clear skies. Okay, the sequence is starting. I just polar aligned the telescope and set up the sequence in Nina. Uh, the only issue is that the comet is right at the border between the clouds and clear sky. Here is a big dipper and the comet is right here on the border. Somewhere there. We'll see if we manage to catch it. Hopefully the clouds will be clearing up even more because the forecast is clear for this night. So this also shouldn't be here at the moment, according to the forecast. Okay, the comet is still outside of the clouds. We can see it. Um, I did manual positioning and rotation because uh, time is uh, of the essence. It's getting lower and lower and will soon hide uh, behind the clouds if they don't clear up. So I'm gonna try to capture as many frames as possible in this time. Unfortunately, the clouds didn't clear up in the beginning of the night, so I only got a few glimpses of the comet through the clouds. I also tried to capture it again the following two evenings, but the conditions were even worse. However, there is a silver lining to the first attempt. Later, during the first night, the clouds did clear up, so I decided to use this chance for capturing Andromeda Galaxy and see how the UltraCat performs. Here you can see aberration inspection of a single unprocessed frame. The stars look pretty solid, but there seemed to be a tiny bit of aberration present in the corners. Uh, that's why I decided to inspect uh, the frame in a step uh, tilt inspection tool and got only 0.3 to 0.4 full width half maximum spread across the field, which is actually pretty good. So I think I'm not dealing with any major tilt or misalignment. The post processing tools like Blur Exterminator will make light work of this, but I wonder how the full frame image would look. 
I might try to use my Sony to test this in the future. Now it's about time to take a look at the post-processed first light data. Um, the comet is barely visible, but is actually a bit better than I expected. So let's say I managed to capture it. As for the Andromeda, I must say I'm pleasantly surprised by the amount of details, considering this is just a few hours of the data. At this point I was about to finish the video off, but decided to wait a few more days because the comet was still getting brighter and exactly one uh, week later after the first attempt I got another chance uh, due to the uh, unexpected uh, clear sky window. After waiting about five days, uh, today the weather forecast was actually bad with possible rain, but as it's getting dark, I have a nice clear window here, so fingers crossed, I managed to capture it tonight. Now it's already pretty dark and it is still clear except for a few small clouds and uh, the moon, but the moon is still in early phase, so it shouldn't cause too much of a trouble. Um, let's check out how single 60 seconds exposure looks through the UltraCat. If we can see any details. <laughs> this comet is getting better and better, I think. It's pretty bright even on a single exposure and we can see the tail easily on a single frame. But I'm not sure if this is ion tail or dust tail. We'll be able to tell after we stack the images. Now I'll try to uh, check it out with my binoculars because it's already pretty dark, but I'll have to turn off my headlamp, headlamp so I can acclimatize to the dark better. Let's see how it looks. The comet was very obvious in my uh, 10 by 50 binoculars and I also showed it to my kids. They were quite excited to see it and were intrigued by the fact that it will take more than 1000 years uh, until we can see it from Earth again. As the comet was slowly setting, the clouds rolled back in again, uh, but I did manage to capture a few decent frames prior to that. Shortly after we had a brief uh, rain shower, so I had to quickly move the telescope back uh, under the observatory roof. After a couple of hours though it cleared up again, so I decided to say hello to the Orion for the first time this season. I pointed my telescope at the Witch's Head Nebula uh, to do another test of the new UltraCat 76. Time to check out uh, the captured data and finished images. Uh, I'm really happy I was able to test the UltraCat 76 while imaging the Comet Lemon. If you have any questions or comments about the telescope gear used uh, or the finished images, do not hesitate to comment below. Stay tuned and as always, clear skies.